So let's learn about the one-way ANOVA statistical test by way of a marketing example. So consider the following research question. On average, is there a difference between someone's subjective craft beer knowledge depending on whether or not they have attended a San Diego craft brewery tour? Now specifically, let's imagine there's actually three types of different people that we can imagine with regard to uh, attending a craft brewery tour. Now first, there are those individuals who have actually gone on a brewery tour. Now there's those who have yet to actually go on a brewery tour in San Diego, but they are interested in doing so. And finally, there's those individuals who have not gone on a brewery tour in San Diego, and they have no interest in doing so. Now, if we, separate, if we separate craft beer drinkers into these three groups, what I'm curious about is on average, are these groups uh, similar or different with respect to how much they think they know about craft beer? So let's see what statistical test is appropriate for us to use given this research question. And notably, notice we have three distinct separate groups. This is important. Now with our handy dandy little cheat sheet to help us select the right statistical test, we can figure out uh, the right test quite easily using our same example that we just illustrated earlier. We, rec we recognize we want to separate people into three different brewery tour groups, and we have a tourism underscore tour variable that captures that in our data set that's in the bottom right there. And for subjective knowledge, we have a SBJ KNW underscore overall uh, variable, which is a Likert scale. I know quite a bit about craft beer, so we can compute an average and compare those scores. So now we think of the separating people into three distinct groups as our independent variable conceptually. So we're separating them this way. So quickly in our little cheat sheet, it says if you have one independent variable with two or more levels in their independent groups, of course, they're independent. If you belong to one of those groups, you can't also belong to one of the other three. That means our dependent variable is the subjective knowledge overall. We want to see if that thing varies and changes between the groups. And this acts as our dependent variable. And since it's a Likert scale on five points, we can assume that it's uh, interval level, so we can calculate an average. And we'll assume that it's roughly normally distributed. And Sim simple enough, we follow this little cheat sheet and that tells us that the one-way ANOVA test is the way to go. And what distinguishes uh, this from previous examples that we've done in class where we use, say, the independent samples t-test is in the fact that we actually have three or more groups. Uh, in this case, we have three. Uh, the independent samples t-test is designed for comparing between exactly two groups. The one-way ANOVA tests for uh, any number of groups. So now that we know our basic analysis that we want to conduct and we know the right test to use, let's set up our hypotheses. So first, uh, the null hypothesis is that there is not a difference in the average craft beer subjective knowledge scores among the three different tour attendance groups. And if that's the null hypothesis, the alternative hypothesis, of course, needs to encapsulate all of the other possibilities. So that would be if there's no difference in the null, there's, there is a difference in the average craft beer subjective knowledge score among the three different tour attendance groups. So we should think about for a second what this alternative hypothesis means in terms of the one-way ANOVA. We're not saying necessarily that every group on average is different from each other. That's possible. We're just saying that there is a difference somewhere, at least, between the groups. Uh, it could be a more dramatic difference amongst the groups, but there's just any difference at all among the two, uh, I'm sorry, more than two groups. So that's our formal statement of our hypotheses. Uh, in marketing practice, I've often mentioned that we usually just state the alternative hypothesis and call it our hypothesis, and the idea is the reader understands that that's the alternative. And then sort of more bluntly stated, the null hypothesis is there's no difference in mean scores among the three groups, an alternative, a difference in mean scores among the three groups. Now for our analysis strategy for the one-way ANOVA in Excel, uh, we're first going to make a simple bar chart to visualize uh, the mean scores between these three groups. So we're not actually going to conduct the test yet. We just want to sort of visually inspect to see if there's something interesting uh, there. And if anything, the, it'll make a nice data visualization we can use later when we report our results. Then we're going to, have to do some data preparation in Excel to prepare this data set so that it's appropriate to run the one-way ANOVA test in Excel. Then we'll actually implement the test and we'll make sense of it. And finally, we will interpret those results and actually talk about how to properly report those results. 
So with that said, this is our pretty much our standard protocol when we approach basic statistical testing uh, and marketing research. So let's get to it. Okay, so in this first step here, what we want to do is we want to simply make a little chart, bar chart, that shows the average subjective knowledge score by someone's uh, tourism uh, San Diego craft beer uh, brewery tour status. So I'm in my values version of the data set here, and I've already highlighted the two relevant variables. What I'm going to do is um, I'm going to use a pivot table to quickly organize the data by the tourism status and then get the average subjective knowledge from there. And then once I have those results, I'm actually going to just manually set up the labeling that I would want and manually build a bar chart. Um, there's a variety of different ways that you could do this. We've built up our skills in Excel uh, throughout the semester already. So there's a variety of other ways you might go ahead and do this, but I just wanted to lay out the way that I'm going to. So I'm going to speed this, speed this up a little bit, but just keep in mind, first I'm making a pivot table, and then I'm going to manually take those results and just manually build out a chart. And as I finish the chart, I'll take a pause and discuss what we see. Okay, so at this point I already have all of my values here that I need, um, but I don't like that the labels are 0, 1, and 2. I'd rather be more useful. So I'm actually going to build my chart manually. So I'll have my categories uh, labeled the way that I want. Um, And then I already know which of these code values correspond to these three categories because I've checked my code book. Okay. And then using the convention of formatting for simple bar charts in Excel, I would put my title up here. Okay, and I just select this little grid, and I insert a simple bar chart. And I'll right click, I'll add data labels. I actually don't want it to the hundredth, I'll reduce this down to just the first decimal point. And I'll double click here on my Y axis because a Likert scale doesn't go from zero to 4.5. It's a little misleading. It actually starts at 1, right? That's strongly disagree, and a maximum of 5. Okay. And I'll also delete these guidelines because we have the labels right there. There's no need for the guidelines. And there we go. Simple bar chart. And just visually inspecting these results, it does in fact appear as though that these average values are not equal. Most notably, those who have attended much higher average subjective knowledge scores than those who have not attended, regardless of whether they're interested or not. But the real question is, is whether we, after we account for sampling error, are we confident in actually declaring that there really is a difference in these groups, or might it just be due to sampling error? So that's why we actually deploy the one-way ANOVA test next. So now that we've done some basic exploration and visualization of the analysis that we're interested in doing, it's time for us to put in the extra work to actually take the data set as presented and prepare it in a format so that it's suitable to run the one-way ANOVA in Excel. So what we see here on this slide is the current format in the data set for our two relevant variables, tourism tour and subjective knowledge overall. Notice we have two columns here. The column to the left indicates which uh, tourism category they belong to, either code of 0, 1, or 2. And here was the same score that that respondent uh, had for their subjective knowledge survey question. Now, to actually run the one-way ANOVA in Excel, we have to really change the way the data set's structured. Instead, it needs to look like how it does on the right. We'll notice that there's three separate columns where the tourism group is 0, 1 and 2. So these are the category headers, if you will. And the actual values for subjective knowledge are below. 
Uh, it's a little easier to see if I sort of highlight all of those individuals who belong to the category group of zero. These are people who uh, have not attended a tour, uh, tour uh, a tasting, I'm sorry, a brewery tour tasting, and they are interested in doing so. And we see their values over here. And the way that we need to restructure this data set is that all of these zeros now need to be organized under this zero header, and then their subjective knowledge values go below. So let's hop over to Excel and take care of this little problem. Okay, to, to actually run this one way ANOVA in Excel, we have to do a little setup work. Now I've already colorized the two columns that are relevant for our analysis, the tourism tour column, which tells us which group people belong into based on their uh, orientation towards craft beer uh, tours. And this is their subjective knowledge, the actual scores that they had. And we're using the values here because they'll be computing average values from these numerical codes. I'm going to make a new sheet, and I'll call it One Way ANOVA here. And the rule for how we set this up in Excel is that we need three separate columns, one for each of the groups with the subjective knowledge values in each column. So the easiest way to do this is if I go to my code book, right here I have my value codes for Tourism Tour 0, 1, and 2, and I know now what the labels are. And I'm going to copy this. Okay, and I'm going to do something a little tricky here with my pasting, so watch what I do. Go back to my One Way ANOVA tab. And it doesn't really matter where I put it, but I'll do it in cell B1 here. When I go to paste, I'm actually going to select the little arrow here And I'm going to transpose this when I paste. Notice how my 0, 1, and 2 are now along the columns. And now I have the labels. So this is just, just for convenience here. As I start pasting the values uh, into this set, I have my columns nicely organized. And the transpose did a 90 degree flip of my copy um, when I did it. So that little transpose paste can be very useful at times. So I go back to my values here. And I see I already have kind of a problem because for the tourism tour values, they're not organized all together, right? I don't have all the zeros together, then all the ones and all the twos, so my data set's not organized the way I want it. But I can do, I can fix that easily. If I just go to A1 here and I right click, or I could navigate to the menu, uh, I can just go to my sort option. I can do a custom sort, and it selects the entire data set. And if I go to tourism tour, and I shall sort from smallest to largest. It'll organize my entire data set, all my rows. So now that all the zeros are all together, and the ones, and so on. That's great. So how this works is now we have to copy and paste. A little tedious, but it's not hard. It's just kind of tedious work to do the one-way ANOVA from here. Select all the zeros first. So I'm looking over to the left here as I'm dragging right there. That's how I have all the values. So now I copy this, all these subjective knowledge values, and I paste them just, just below my zero. Okay. Now I do the same for the one and the two. So this is just the way that we have to set this up to do a one-way ANOVA uh, in Excel. So we now we have three separate columns. And the values are dependent variable, if you will. Subjective knowledge is all there. They don't have to be um, equal in size. That's fine. So now it's really easy to run this. It just took a little work to set this all up. We just go to data, go to our data analysis tool pack, and we go to single factor ANOVA. Okay. So our input range here, I'll imagine it was empty. It would normally be empty, is all of the values so notice I started selecting actually these labels up top. Well, that'll be helpful for us in a second. So just the labels, not the 0, 1, and 2 at top, just the labels. And then I can go all the way down here. I got to get all my data. Okay. That's good. The data is, in fact, grouped by columns. Remember the three separate columns. Our labels were in the first row. Remember I selected those label values. So that'll make our output a little easier to read. Set our alpha level. So this is our... Our value 0.05, so 95% confidence, that's pretty standard. And we want to give uh, our results into a new worksheet. And I already clearly had done this before. I gave it a name. 
and you can call it whatever you want. I'll call this ANOVA results. And that's it. We're all set to go. Just hit OK and run it. Okay, so here, here's our results. I'm going to just tidy this up just a little bit, make it a little bigger. I don't like that these average values here are so poorly organized. I have too many decimals. Let's make that same thing for variance. So before we even look at the test, let's just look at the summary statistics, right? So we have three groups, and when they are, our labels are right here. That's nice. And the largest group was with 148 people, those uh, who did not do this but would like to do it. And the average value on subjective knowledge was a 2.9 on a 5-point scale. The group that has done this before, about 50 people, they have in fact gone to a uh, brewery tour. Their average score of subjective knowledge was a 4 on a 1 to 5. So as we might expect and as we've seen, they report a higher level of subjective knowledge about craft beer. And then finally, the group that had the lowest average subjective knowledge is that the group that says they have not done this before and they have no interest in doing so. So maybe no surprise, they're just disinterested in this topic. Okay, and the variance. So this is literally um, a way to interpret the dispersion of the answers to these questions for each group, and the, the variance is approximately similar. A little more dispersion here in the in the first group. Okay, so that's just basic summary statistics. That's relevant for interpreting our data, but we actually want to know how to interpret the results of the ANOVA test, right? So let's look down here. And there's actually quite a bit of stuff that we're looking at here, right? But really, we can zoom right in and just go right to our p-value. And norm, uh, by default here, it's presented as in like a general number format. I'm actually going to switch it to a formal number format. And in this case, I'm going to just poke out all the decimals for a second just to show you that our p-value that we observed from this test is clearly, clearly, clearly much less than our value of 0.05. So in this case, we clearly reject the null hypothesis. In other words, we are, in fact, willing to claim that these average values are not equal. Okay. Now, there's one other sort of easy statistic you can calculate from this that I think is useful for reporting. It's called um, eta squared. So it looks sort of like this, A to the Greek letter. I'll just put an N there if you don't mind. And the calculation is actually very simple. It's a simple fraction. We just take our sum of squares between the groups here, so the 53.4 sum of squares, and divide that by the total sum of squares. And what we get here is a percentage, or can be interpreted as a percentage, I should say. So why this is useful is, is what this is saying is for all of the variation that exists for people on their, their subjective knowledge about craft beer, all of it, so the whatever, however much variation there is in all the people that we studied, let's call that the 100% of the total variation. About 14% of that total variation can be accounted for which group someone belongs to. So in other words, it tells us that just knowing someone's uh, behavior towards uh, going on a brewery tour doesn't account for 100% of all of the variation that might exist in people's subjective knowledge about craft beer, but it does capture a decent percentage of it. So it does have some meaningful explanatory power there. For our purposes, this will suffice in being able to do a simple interpretation of our one-way ANOVA. Of course, there's clearly a lot more we could dive into, but this covers the basics and should get you in a good place to conduct this test and implement it on your own project if you need to do so. Okay, now that we have our results generated, it's time to interpret and report those results in a marketing research report. So let's take an original look at the results of the single factor ANOVA, or the one-way ANOVA, that came from the uh, Excel analysis tool pack. Pretty standard output, and it's really not report ready. Let's see some of the editing and formatting and adjustments that we made 
and figure out why it's more appropriate for a marketing research report. So I'm going to explain it point by point, but here's a good opportunity for you to pause the video and reflect. What are you seeing that's different on the right hand side compared to the left that improves the quality of reporting the results of the one-way ANOVA test? Well, here's a few things that I see. First, I notice that the labeling has been, been improved. Notice we use shortened summary of terms to describe the groups, which doesn't change the meaning at all and makes it a little clearer for the respondent, or I'm sorry, the person reading the table. We've also changed the labeling up here a little differently. We've made the results in the summary table more intuitive, which is also reflected in the chart so that people who have attended are first with the highest average subjective knowledge score and those who have not attended, not interested, have the lowest. So by rank ordering the results by score here, it's a bit easier to interpret this chart compared to what we see on the left. There's also more conventional summary statistics reported on the right-hand side. Specifically, rather than showing the count of the respondents, so the number of people in our sample, we're actually reporting the percentage of respondents here. So this is simply just the original count on the left divided by the total count of all observations. And why is this useful? Well, again, the reason we draw from a sample is, is we do think it should be reflective of the overall population. So by looking at these percentages here, we're also giving some insight into how common we think each one of these groups are in the general population, which of course is the kind of information that's relevant to a marketer. Also, rather than reporting the variance, we reported the slightly more conventional uh, summary statistic for dispersion, which is the standard deviation. We also have more compact reporting. So where do we see some evidence of more compact reporting? Well, the sum column in the summary stats is just simply not relevant for a reader of your results. There's, no, there's nothing meaningful about summing up the score on the survey uh, to the count, so we simply can drop that. In addition, we're able to get rid of the entire ANOVA table, the actual statistical test, and instead create a simple summary line that concisely summarizes everything a reader needs to know about that statistical test. We show that there's a statistical uh, significant difference in the means with the one-way ANOVA. The F here is we have 2, 227, so that's the degrees of freedom between groups and within groups. This is just a standard reporting convention here. If you look up the APA style guidelines for one-way ANOVA, you'll see this. And the F, the F value that comes from there is 18.99. Now, most importantly is just this little P value here for those readers who understand the basic gist of a statistical test but may forget the relevance of uh, F values, is here they can see that the P value that was calculated here is much, much less than 0.05. So they can determine and verify that you ran the test and that it's statistically significant using the standard convention of 95% uh, level of confidence required. And as an analyst, sometimes some of these different depictions and nitty gritty of the results and statistical values as a result of the ANOVA test could be useful, relevant, or needed. But this is all that we, the reader needs to know. You ran the test and you can report the results of the test correctly. So we've removed, removed unneeded or less helpful stats in our final reporting here. Then lastly, of course, we visualize the results, right? A simple data visualization is now available to the reader so they have a little more context and understanding of what the results uh, of our analysis are telling us. Now, how do we write this up? Well, here's one approach. Average subjective knowledge about craft beer was highest among those individuals who have participated in a brewery tour in San Diego mean of 4, standard deviation of 1.1, percent average of respondents is 21.7. The average subjective knowledge was lowest amongst those who had not attended a brewery tour nor were interested in doing so, a mean of 2.6, standard deviation 1.1, percent of respondents 13.9 percent, and a similar, albeit higher, average was observed among those who had not attended a brewery but were interested in doing so, a mean of 2.9, standard deviation 1.2, percent of respondents 64.3 percent. 
result of a one-way ANOVA confirmed at 95% confidence that subjective knowledge about craft beer differed among the three different brewery tour groups. P-value less than 0.001. This mostly comports to conventions that are suggested in like APA style guidelines. It's a little simplified, um, relevant, uh, because we're trying to orient this uh, statistical testing and results to a more managerial audience, and they're not as accustomed to reading sort of academic -y APA style stuff. And as always, it's kind of interesting to reflect on how we summarized and reported our results here, because notice only that final sentence has anything to do with the actual statistical test, the actual one-way ANOVA test. Everything else in this paragraph is things that you could have computed just doing basic summary statistics. There was no need for the one-way ANOVA whatsoever. So as we've kind of become accustomed to seeing, and something you'll always deal with when doing statistical testing, is you often have to put an enormous amount of work in setting up and running and properly interpreting a statistical test. But in terms of actually reporting the results of those tests to an audience, it's often just a few sentences or a small data visualization that's only a tiny fraction of the overall reporting. So if you feel a little frustrated as a new analyst, we have to put a lot of work into a very small amount of output, like a single sentence, uh, that's understandable, but that is very much just part of the game.